Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, and delighted, as always, you've been able to tune in with us yet again today. Now, before we do get into the stories of today, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and share. If you like listening on a podcast player, just check the link below down in the description, and you'll come to a beautiful website where a host of podcast players are available with the Thai Expat Daily Show. And finally, if you feel like supporting the show, there's a Buy Me a Coffee link in the description as well, and you can just donate through there as well. Now that that's all done. Let's jump into the top few stories that we have for you today. Uh, the first one is coming about Taksin Shinawatra, and he's ready for jail if he comes home. Former fugitive prime minister Taksin Shinawatra says he is ready to serve his prison term in Thailand, provided he is allowed to spend the rest of his life with his family, regardless of the results of the coming election. Speaking in an interview with Kyoto News during a trip to Tokyo, Taksin said he was biding his time before possibly returning to Thailand this year, following years of living in self-exile abroad. He was ousted in a military coup in 2006 and left the country in 2008 before being sentenced to two years imprisonment for conflict of interest. Now I've served 16 years already in the big jail because they prevent me from staying with my family, said Taksin, now 73, referring to his life away from his home country. I've suffered enough. If I were to suffer again in a smaller jail, well, it's okay. It's not really the price I need to pay, but I will pay because I want to stay with my grandchildren. I should spend the rest of my life with my children and my grandchildren. The populist billionaire who served as Prime Minister from 2001 to 2006 expressed confidence that the Putai party will win the May 14th election by achieving a majority in the lower house. His younger daughter, Peitong Tarn Shinawatra, is expected to be one of the three prime ministerial candidates from the party. Prime Minister Prayachana Cha dissolved the lower house on March 20th to pave the way for the election. The former coup leader, who first came to power in 2014 by topping a Putai government led by Taksin's sister, Yingluk, has also announced his bid to remain premier after the election. And moving along to a story kind of similarly on this whole election, a Prawit meets activists and claims no more coups with a condition. Deputy Prime Minister General Prawat Wang Suwan did not rule out the possibility of another military coup if the country is thrown into chaos again. Prawat's comments came during an encounter on Thursday with a political activist who has been campaigning against military intervention in politics and demanding reform of the monarchy. Patsavali Tanekit Bulpan, better known as Mild, visited the headquarters of the Palang Pracharat party as a member of the media to ask for an interview with Prawit. It was their first encounter since Patsavali became leader of the pro-democracy movement that engineered anti-military street protests in 2020 and 2021. In response to Miles' questions, Prawit, who is leader of the Palang Pracharat party, said he believes that Thailand would not see another coup on the condition that there are no more serious conflicts. There will be no more coups if the country is united and there are no conflicts that lead to casualties. But if the country is in turmoil, it, that is a coup, may be necessary, he said. Prime Minister Prayachana Cha, speaking last week, however, said that he did not expect to see another coup in Thailand. That coup was the last coup, he said, referring to his seizure of power in 2014. Prawat also told Mild that his party's platform in general towards bringing about political reconciliation. Mild, who also posed for a selfie with Prawit, described her conversation with the Palang Pracharat leader as rather interesting and said she intends to talk to other political parties, including United Thai Nation, which is nominating General Prayut as its prime ministerial candidate. Mild is facing a string of charges related to her political activities, including allegedly insulting the monarchy and disturbing the peace. I love how these guys keep reiterating that, oh, there's going to be no more coups, there's going to be no more coups. I'm pretty sure that's what the last coup maker said as well. And then, of course, we had another coup. I believe this election is going to be rather interesting. It'll be very interesting to see who, if Putai win who they nominate for prime ministerial candidate, and whether or not the military-installed Senate will actually vote for her. And I can see things happening in this country if the party that wins the most, and let's just go on the line that Putai were to win the most seats and try to form a government and put forward um, Taksin's daughter as the prime ministerial candidate. If now she wasn't voted in, if they refuse to you know, ratify her as being the new prime minister for the reason that, well, they just don't like her. I think this could cause serious problems in this country. And I think the people who voted for Putai would 
be out in the streets and I think this could cause issues along the way. Now, I did read and something Anotan, the member, ministry, minister of public health, he's also the leader of the Bumjai Thai party, he now said also that the Senate have no right to vote against a candidate if it's the people's will. So let's hope those kind of words are listened to in the forthcoming election. Now, moving along and an interesting story and something, of course, we should always be weary of. Tourist police clamp down on overstay tourism related crimes. Thailand's tourist police have launched a new nationwide campaign to suppress tourism-related crime, including overstay and other violations of the law by foreign visitors to Thailand and foreign residents living here in the kingdom. The campaign was launched yesterday in Pattaya. Tourist Police Deputy Commissioner Major General Pong Siam presided over the ceremony, joined by various members of the Immigration Police and other officers. Tourist Police reported in a Facebook post that officers will crack down on 10 types of tourism-related crimes, such as overstay and others' offences affecting all aspects of tourism businesses across the country. The list of 10 crimes was not revealed to the public. In the same publication, Tourist Police passed a message to tourists and fellow citizens about how they can send relevant information to the agency and report incidents. Two channels of communication were recommended, namely the 1155 hotline and the Tourist Police I Alert You mobile application. The latter also allows sharing geolocation and pictures. At the time of print, Phuket Tourist Police has not issued any statement about the new campaign. And I think it's inevitable that there is going to be a crackdown here in the country. Now, the first thing about overstay, and it's always something that has intrigued me, is how they don't know who's on overstay. Everybody who enters Thailand, legally, let's say, comes to an immigration post. They have their passports scanned and they're stamped in for the period of time that they're allowed to stamp in for. Now, when you're leaving Thailand, you get stamped back out. And surely they have a program that can tell them who hasn't extended their visa and who's on overstay in the country. And look for these people if that's the case. It seems that the system is there to do it, but it always seems that they're on the lookout and catch people by accident. You know, a random guy walking down the street and they stopped him and asked for his passport and they found that he was on overstay. Surely there is a better system than this. I mean, as I said, if you're you're stamping a person in and stamping a person out, you will know when they are meant to have left the country and you would be able to put together a list of people that you're looking for. In terms of crime here that's being committed by foreigners, I agree absolutely. If people are committing crime, it needs to be clamped down on and people need to be punished according to the law. There's a lot of dodgy stuff going on here in Thailand, whether it's illegal nominees and businesses, businesses being run by people that shouldn't be running these particular businesses, foreigners doing jobs that Thais should only be doing and, you know, basic just bad behaviour. That kind of stuff should be clamped down and the police should take action. So, of course, yes, you can notify the police when you see these things and be, you know, a good visitor here to the country. I know it's a, it's a saying that people always say, but, you know, we are at the end of the day, regardless if you don't think so or not. Most of us are on extensions of stay and we're merely visitors to the country at the end of the day. We're guests here. So I do always believe there is a certain onus on us to behave when we're in the country and to behave better than the locals do, to lead the way and how things should be done and how we should behave when we're in a country that's not ours. It is difficult at times. We do get frustrated and everybody understands that. But as I said, I do believe with the amount of tourists that have been coming into the country post-COVID, the numbers are surging. There is going to be inevitably crime committed by foreigners and people will always look to take advantage of situations in tourist areas, particularly in tourist areas. It is good that the police are taking this seriously and they're going to go after the people that cause issues, hopefully do their time and then deport them and these kind of people are out of the way. Again, if you're a foreigner living here in the country, you know, there's only a couple of things to keep yourself really out of trouble. One, make sure you're always within your visa, you're not overstaying and behave yourself when you're here. And that's basically it. Failure to do that, I think, will lead you to being deported and you have nobody to blame but yourself if you overstay. That's my opinion on it all. Now, there's also another issue that people I think is going to be coming up soon and we're going to see clampdowns on foreign owned businesses and business nominees, you know, using fake nominees because any business here in Thailand, with the exception, I think, of American-owned ones, and I could 
because there's a treaty. But in general, a business here in Thailand has to be owned by a majority of Thai. So 51% versus 49% has to be held by Thais. And this has got around by using fake nominees in business. I think there's going to be a huge clampdown coming on this in the near future. And I also think there's going to be a huge clampdown coming down on education and volunteer visas because I think these have been abused big time here in the country and I have a feeling in the not so distant future that we're going to see some raids on schools looking for papers looking for proof these people are doing what they're meant to be doing here in the country which is you know learning Thai being educated and of course the volunteer visa I, I've been saying this for now three to four years it's been absolutely abused in this country it's been abused to let people stay here longer who really have no right to stay here any longer. I think you always fall into certain categories of visa and if the, if you don't meet that threshold of what you need to stay in the country then I guess you can't stay. That's kind of how I've always seen it. Like married people who are married, if you meet that standard of what you need, you know, your 400,000 in the bank, your marriage certificate, all your bits and bobs in your, you know, your ducks in, in, in a row, you meet that. If you're retiring, the same thing. If you are studying here and you're legitimately studying here, that's all fine. But there is a, a section of people who are coming to this country who Basically, if I'm on Facebook at times, you can see the amount of people in Phuket Jobs, for example, is one place i always interested to look at, is the amount of foreigners who are always going, oh, can I work at that job? Can I work at that job? I'm not going to talk about what nationality, where they come from, anything like that. But it is obvious that there are people in this country who really may not have the means to be here and shouldn't be here because they don't fit into any classification of visa. And I think that needs to be also looked at in the near future. But I'd love to know your opinion on all this. Do you think a clampdown is warranted? Do you think the police should take action on overstairs and people who seem to be bending the law to get by? I'd love to know your comments as always down below in that comment section. And moving along, the governor of Phuket had a meeting uh, with the consuls and embassies to keep the peace. Phuket governor met with consul generals and honorary consuls from across the island yesterday to discuss a raft, raft of topics, including tourist arrivals and crime involving foreigners. Now we're staying on the same. The meeting held at Phuket Provincial Hall saw representatives from 14 countries attend, including consuls from South Korea, Germany, France, Estonia, United Kingdom, the Czech Republic, Chile, China, Australia, Russia, Mexico, Switzerland, Norway, Netherlands, Nepal and Spain. Governor Narong said that Phuket has a large number of tourists and tourists following the rules, namely laws, was important for coexistence between local people and the tourists to be happy and peaceful, said an official report of the meeting. Now, Police Major General Sampan, the commander of the Phuket Pol Provincial Police, said that ensuring the safety of tourists was successful due to the implementation of the White Accommodation Project, also called the Phuket Crime Free Campaign, the report added. The success was in no small part the result of police working with many sectors, including Phuket immigration and hotels, in robbery and theft cases, especially involving Russian perpetrators and Russian victims, he said. Phuket Immigration Chief Colonel Tanet Sukchai pointed out that according to official records, there are currently 33,068 foreigners living in Phuket, with the top five being Russian, British, French and Chinese citizens, respectively. Since the start of the year, 181 foreigners have been deemed suspects in criminal cases, with the top five being foreign nationals from Myanmar, Russia, France, England and Cambodia. The consuls were also briefed on the official statistics of the number of tourists now coming to the island. Among the slides shown, one presented that Chinese tourists climbed to number two ranking for February, with 30,493 Chinese nationals arriving in Phuket. The slide pointed out that the number of Chinese arrivals amounted to only 16% of the recovery rate compared with 2019. The meeting was also used as a platform to remind the consuls of Phuket's bid to host Expo 2028 and remind them of the Traffi Fondu Citizenship Empowerment app for reporting local issues to authorities. The consuls were also reminded to call on nationals from the countries they represent to join the RH Negative Blood Donation Drive to be held at Central Festival on Monday, March 27th. You can just imagine these consuls sitting there wondering what is going on and why are we being called to a meeting. I wonder how often in other countries 
consuls are summoned to the governor's office to listen to them lecture to them about their citizens and the behavior the truth is the embassies don't give a shit about their citizens and what they're doing in any particular country until it they actually get in trouble and of course they may or may not help the bottom line is most embassies and consuls are there for other reasons other than to look after tourists they're there for business reasons many times and they're there to present their country and kind of have that opportunity to create some kind of business opportunities getting help from a consulate or an embassy is very difficult because at the end of the day they don't really care and that has always been my kind of view on what they do here in various countries i mean becoming an ambassador seems like it's a luxury job with you just hanging out and not particularly doing very much i have looked at various um ambassadors here in thailand and and that's pretty much all they do they turn up for photo ops when somebody gets in trouble most times they say well we can't help that we can't help with money we're offering support and that's really all they do at the end of the day consuls and, and embassies what they'll do is they'll post information on their website and that's it they're not going to be going around handing out pamphlets when you're flying to thailand right saying this is what you should be doing and this is what you shouldn't be doing the information is published on their websites and that's it it's as if the phuket governor thinks these guys have a direct line to all their citizens when they arrive here in the country which is just not the case but it does show a certain naivety on the phuket governor and not kind of understanding what the role of consuls and embassies are in thailand and finally moving along phuket's condo supply fails to meet demand the condo market in Phuket has been facing a significant shortfall in supply with high demand for residential units remaining unmet. That's according to a recent report by a real estate consultant's Knight Frank Thailand. The island's property market has been struggling to keep up with the growing demand for condos, particularly in areas such as Katu, Penang and Kamala. The report revealed that condo market in Phuket has been witnessing a steady increase in demand due to a rise in both domestic and foreign investors. However, the supply of new residential units has been struggling to keep pace, resulting in a shortage of supply in the market. The shortfall has been attributed to a combination of factors including the slow pace of new project launches, a lack of available land for development and regularity hurdles. The report suggests that developers have been cautious in launching new projects due to the economic uncertainty caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the challenges, Knight Frank Thailand expects the condo market in Phuket to rebound in the coming years. The report forecasts that the market will benefit from increasing demand for high-quality residential units, particularly from foreign investors seeking to take advantage of the island's natural beauty and world-class amenities. In conclusion, the condo market in Phuket is struggling to keep up with its rising demand for residential units, resulting in a shortfall of supply. Developers have been cautious in launching new projects due to a range of factors, including COVID-19. However, the market is expected to rebound in the next coming years. Now, that is pretty true, I guess, but I think Phuket has been overdeveloped in many ways. It's not that there's a lack of things, it's just it's overdevelopment and people, you're running out of land in the place. Now, where I live, there's an awful lot of land available. It's owned by banks actually in general, but it's land that really can't be built on too much. And instead of, you know, building stuff on it and putting up houses and everything, you know, that are really only being bought by a certain demographic of people, it would be nice to think that they're going to create green spaces where people can go have a picnic or hang out or enjoy life in the outdoors. And what's happening in Phuket is areas like that are becoming very scarce, hard to find, and there's no real thought about it. I also think they've forgotten that before COVID, when the island was very full, they were running out of water because they don't have enough water for the island. So there needs to be a lot more thought going into what they're building in this island, where they're building it, the resources that are needed to be able to supply all these places with electric, water, heating, whatever, AC, whatever it needs to be. But there doesn't. It's just in this island, all it is is about build, build, build as much as they can in the little space that's left. And there's no thought being put into green spaces for people to enjoy life and into particularly having like just a environmentally aware area where people can kind of understand what it's like to live on an island. For me, Phuket is no longer really an island. This idea that it has world-class amenities as well is kind of laughable at times. I mean, you can't go from one end to the other end without of the island without taking two hours because of the ridiculous amount of traffic. World-class destinations have public transportation systems. Phuket does not. And nobody knows when there'll ever be one because of the taxi mafia. So these kind of things need to be looked at when you're building more and more units. And we're not just talking about condos here, but we're also talking about hotels popping up all over the place. There is no thought going into do how the island has been developed. And people will just continue to build, build, build until there's nothing left. 
and this island has absolutely nowhere for anyone to go because there's no space left on the island and that is my opinion on it if you've lived in phuket you probably know what i'm talking about but anyway guys that's it for today thanks for tuning into the show as always and delighted that we've been able to give you some stories of news from thailand today stay safe out there guys and have a great day but ultimately with this story or anything else that stood out to you today i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below because yes this is a new show but it's also a conversation now keep that conversation going make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel share the video and do all the good stuff that does help that youtube algorithm but ultimately my name is kieran mack You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show and we will see you next time.